Hey folks, welcome to part 21 of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. First question is going to be which of the following can be used with a parameter to dynamically control the top N members based on a measure? That's a mouthful. Is it going to be groups, bins, hierarchy, or sets? So what, th what this is saying is which of these options can you use alongside a parameter where you can actually go in and update the value such that you can dictate as per the visualization that, hey, I want to see the top five or top 10, you know, categories or customers by a particular measure such as sales. Um, so for this, we will demonstrate in Tableau to, to figure this one out. So again, is it going to be groups, bins, hierarchy, or sets? So with groups, what exactly is a group? Well, let's say you have a bunch of subcategories and I want to, you know, make these top four a group. I would, you know, highlight all four of these, right? So I'm just dragging and dropping my cursor, then this tooltip pops up and I can click on group members. That's one of the many ways you can actually create a group and it's this uh, paperclip icon basically. But can I have a parameter dictate that? No, it's pretty much a manual effort that you would have to do. There's no way to really do it dynamically. So it can't be groups. How about bins? Uh, if I go to bins, uh, for example, um, and let's say I want to create a bin based on sales. So I can go to create, I can go to bins. And what this is going to allow me to do is basically set up buckets within the sales field such that it's going to help me create a distribution in a sense. So let's say again, we're creating a bin on the sales field. Now it's asking me the size of the bins, right? So based on the underlying values, it's going to suggest a size. In this case, it's four, four, six. Um, but yeah, can you have a parameter dictate the size? You certainly can. But what if I, you know, what if again, we're looking at sales or something along those lines, we're looking at a measure. What if I want to dictate that? So I'm just, you know, just for the heck of it, um, bin size, that's going to be my parameter. And let's say, um, we're going to allow all possible values and the current value is going to be five just for the heck of it. Once again, uh, the display format, let's just do standard number and click okay. And then we can say, use that bin size parameter to dictate the size. So now I have a sales bin. Let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna drag that over here. And as you can see, we now have these bins with you know incrementing in five because that's the size that we uh, elected. So if I show parameter here, I can maybe change this to 10 and that's uh, effectively going to change the size of the bins. But does that actually help me in terms of um, in terms of identifying like you know my top ten or top n or top five? If I want to see my top five customers, does this help me? No, because this is only taking place on the measure itself, and because this only reflects or it only really uh, applies on the measure, this can't help us in this scenario, right? Because we want to talk about the top n members based on a measure. So again. But if I want to see like my top uh, 10 customers, top 10 products, something along those lines. So it can't be bin. Um, how about hierarchy? Um, in fact, we have a product hierarchy here um, already available. Is there any way to dynamically give us the top five categories or something along those lines using a parameter as it relates to hierarchy? No, there's no actual dynamic feature available in that, in that sense. How about the last option, sets? Um, so if I want to create a set, what do I have to do? So again, we want to be able to, if you pay attention to the question, control the top end members based on a measure. So top end members, members of a dimension, for example. So if I right click subcategory, let's say that's what we want to focus on. I want the top five subcategories based on sales. So I can right click on subcategory, which is a dimension, and I can go to create and I can create a set. And then I can say, what do I want within this set, right? I can pick and choose manually, or I can use a condition, or I can use the top condition. And what this is going to allow me to do is if I click on by field, right? I want top five um, based on what? I want the top five or 10 subcategories based on sales. So what, what are we pulling here? We're pulling sales. 
And what kind of aggregation? Sum of sales, right? I want the total sales by subcategory and then give me the five, you know, top five or top 10. How do we control this with a parameter? Well, because over here you can type in, you know, a manual number or you can, you know, use from one of the existing um, parameters or create a new one, which is what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna click uh, create new parameter and we're gonna name this set parameter. And we're gonna give this a default value of 10 because we are gonna be able to change it. And then you can have your min max range. You're gonna click okay, click okay here so that it actually creates the subcategory set. Or actually, let's just, let's just rename this so it's a little more self-explanatory. So top 10 subcategories, right? But again, it's dynamic, so let's just name this top N subcategories. Click OK, and now I have my set over here. I can drag that here, and you will see you know what's in, what's out. We can right-click over here to show us members in or outside that group. And uh, we can see the respective sales if I drag uh, the sales measure here. And finally, uh, again, we created the set parameter. So I'm going to show that. And notice I can, instead, I can have the top five, or well, let me change this to a text field so I could type it in. Uh, let's say one top five. It'll give me the top five. So what's the top number here? The 335,000. So if I have the top one, that should just show me the chairs 335,000, and it does. So you have a dynamic parameter here that's able to control the top end members based on a measure, which is sales, using, what did we use here? We use sets, so, that, so that's the solution here. By the way, if you do enjoy videos like this, consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this. Next question, which of the following are valid data types in Tableau? Is it going to be number, whole, is it going to be date, string, spatial, or money? So a lot of these might not even be familiar, but this is just going back to the basics, so hopefully you should know the answer uh, if you are ready for the exam. Let's head on, uh, head on over to Tableau so we can answer this one. What are the available data types? Well, to answer this, if we right click on any, really any field here and go to change data type, we can see all the available data types. So you can have number decimal, you can have number whole, date and time, as well as date. You can have a string, spatial, and you have Boolean. So of the ones that you see here, we see the number whole, we saw the date, we saw the spring, uh, string, we did see the spatial, we didn't see the money. So it's gonna be the top four here that are going to be the solution. Just to show you real quick, once again, uh, all of these, right? So uh, we do see the spatial, we don't see the money. So that's gonna be the solution here. Next question, what does the following icon represent in Tableau? Is it going to be set, group, bin, or attachment? We actually just covered this on the first question. So hopefully you should know the answer, but just kind of going through these, if you see these two circles, that represents a set. That's not uh, what we see here, so that can't be the solution. How about group? If you remember, um, we just had a few subcategories over here, and then we highlighted a few, and then this paperclip icon, it said group members, and that's exactly what we did, and you could see that's the icon that you see. So that icon here represents group. Uh, just for the heck of it, if you wanted to see the bin, it would look something like this, almost like a normal distribution uh, bar graph, if you will. Um, and then last one here is obviously a distractor. It looks like an attachment, but in, tablo in the Tableau world, there's no such thing as an attachment, at least not in uh, Tableau desktop itself. So that can be the solution. The only solution here will be group. Next question. Which of the following can be used to display multiple measures on the same line chart or time series. So again, we have, what is a time series? Basically when you have the date um, acting as the column shelf, you're gonna have basically a line going like this for a particular measure. So if you wanna display multiple measures, do you see a blended axis, a dual axis, a duplicate axis, or omni axis? Which of these will actually allow you to have both coexist on the on the same uh, chart, basically. So let's uh, let's go into Tableau for this one yet again. Um, we're gonna need to pull in the order date to help us generate that time series, right? We wanna be able to see it over time. Um, and let's say two measures. So we're gonna take profit, and we're also going to take quantity. So notice, even with one measure, you have this time series. If I add another measure, what you'll notice is now it's gonna be two charts, right? So I have this, you know, I have the profit against time, then I have the quantity against time. But really, I just want to I just want to see both of these lines sitting on the same chart, even if it doesn't make sense. That's the goal. So what do I use? 
blended axis, dual axis, duplicate axis, or omni axis. So all you really need to do is on the second axis here, you can click on dual axis, and that's gonna now um, basically allow you to see both of these measures at the same time on the same chart. So now you'll notice you have only one, um, one header over here that's a representation of time, but now you have two axes, right? So you have one for profit, you have one for quantity, because now we have a dual axis. That's the definition of dual axis. But again, what was the official term? It wasn't blended axis, it was dual axis. It wasn't duplicate axis nor omni axis. So, so that second option here will be the correct solution. Quick pause. If you like these videos, but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Examiner Certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now, there are a limited number of spots available so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know practice makes perfect and that's a wrap thank you guys so much for watching hope you found the video helpful as always be sure to like the video if you haven't be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and of course as always i will catch you on the next one thank you for watching yeah.